And what it is, is this my last, actually 756. I had stopped at 720 and I decided I'd start carrying this book on out a little more because I was getting such interesting information. Now my both die on axis is just barely better than the previous. Everything else, again, pretty much standard. Nothing's changed. My double pitch count might be a little bit less. Ultimately, that's where the money's made, getting rid of your double pitches in your toss due to the flaws that I have with my toss and a little bit of a bouncy surface. I'm having a little bit of difficulty keeping everything on axis where I'd like this number up here to be closer to 50% with a higher number of primary face hits. Let's go to the stats page. Okay, I'm just barely on this last 756 moved the chi-squared test out of the influenced position. Not really concerning at this point. Sometimes Kai can be a little bit over exaggerated, but it is a nice thing to know, and I would prefer it be down, and it might get down there as I continue to throw. But look, 3 1 is now on those last 756 where it was second, it's moved up to number one. So things are beginning to stabilize with my toss for this particular die set. The other thing that's interesting is aces came up as my number two hit number. Valuable if I'm going to be playing this die set on a crapless table. So I've got a four and a ten, six four, in my top three hits, and then a six and a five, etc., all the way down. An eight doesn't show up till way down here. Now, I've still got a lot of my sevens. The majority of my sevens are still way down here on all the possible facial hits, but the one six and this five two have crept up into the middle, and I would think that's to be expected. No big advantage on hard ways really at all here. Um, hard four slightly advantage, but not enough to regularly bet on. Let's look at the rolls between sevens on this last 756. On this last 756, I had uh, five strings of tosses that were 20 or longer. That's still a good number. And it kind of mirrors the previous graph on the 1446. Yep, there's 11 back-to-back -back sevens. There's 14 sevens after you've thrown a number. Again, it doesn't have to be a box number. It doesn't. It, Bone Tracker doesn't care. It's just how many tosses did you make between sevens. <clears throat> Again, get out here well under the curve on the six, seven, eight, and then boom, at 10, I had six. And then I start stretching out. I had four at the 18 toss level. So out here, again, are your money makers. You got to survive through the short to medium range hands, get into those long range hands. Look at the charts. Very similar, except there's a few things more pronounced. Very heavy on twos in the last 756 tosses. A lot of fours. Fours are my most overthrown number when it comes to your probability. Still six, still eight. The nine was strong on the right hand side, but the 10 moved up for me. I'm happy with that. Fours, tens, some sixes and some eights, and I'm gonna make some money and I'm gonna be happy. 
let's transpose. All right, so here I am at my 7.56. This is my exact toss count out of those tosses, 756. I had 107, this gives me a 7.56 SRR. Now, I'm going to slide on out here because I've got the same setup. I've got 24 different columns from the coaster chart set up. And I get out here, column 13, that's what I was tossing. Same as last time. Funny thing is, is I've got another column now that gives me a 7.58. 7.58, 7.58. So now I've got two columns that I've got to start analyzing and looking at to see what my preferred dice sets and numbers might be. This set right now, this column 13, is looking very much like field, craps, and horn numbers. Look at that. This set over here is hitting more in the box numbers, 243 six and eights versus 213, 546 across numbers versus 512, 424 numbers versus 377, and way down below on the field, craps and horn numbers. All right, same sets now what I had to do was I had to go put in all 24 numbers for this column and all 24 numbers for this column. I put those in across the top on this transpose 64 and you'll notice that all of my input dice sets all the way across seven to here, 7.56. So I know that all these die sets up here at the top, all, I think there's really, I think I've got a couple of them input twice, so there should only be 48, but I'm showing 50. Um, all have the same SRR. So I can, with confidence, start looking and dissecting which ones give me what numbers? You want fours and tens? There's my best number is 145 out of 720. So 145 divided by 720 is 20%. So if 20% of my tosses are four and tens, I'm getting a lot of hits. But right here, same number, it's going to give me, out. this is the outside, this lighter green right here, it's the outside on the far left, you can see this column. I get 340 outside numbers, fours, fives, nines, and tens. It's a good, way to, good thing to know if you're going to bet that way. If I wanted to do a field progression, I might consider this one gives me 377 field numbers. 377 divided by 756 is 49.8%. So almost 50% of this particular die set, this 2464, gives me a field number. Now, it's not high in craps per se, it's not high in horn numbers, but it's a lot of field numbers. If I want more numbers, my best sets are one to give me 153. Here's that same field number, 377, but it gives me my 145 in 4 and 10s. Again, that's a good thing to know. 5414 on my toss for the last 756 tosses. Gives me strong in four and tens and the field. Maybe 
here. This set, the 6454, four, gives me the strongest sets for the, for the 6 and 8, for all the across numbers and the inside numbers. Probably a very good all around useful die set. Not necessarily one you would use for sniping, but one that you might use to make some good money on the box numbers, especially if you're having repetitious numbers. So, a good toolbox die set to have. If I need a 12, best number I can get is 30. Now, I only threw 14, which was 7 under expected, so here's a 30. If I need a 12, I may switch to that 2632 and see if I can't snipe a 12 while I'm making other numbers. Especially if you're on one of those long hands. You'll see a lot of, I mean, Bone Tracker picks out your best sets based on the criteria in this left hand column. 6, 8, 5, 9, 4, and 10. The across, the inside, the outside, the even numbers, field numbers, etc. You like to play the world bet on the come out? It'll show you what your set gave you the most of. Right here. See, it's a low SRR number because it's got more sevens. Sevens, part of the world bet. So this is how I use it. <clears throat> and so what I do now is I'll start going back, digging a little deeper. I'll probably add another 36 or 72 tosses uh, to this particular bone tracker sheet, spreadsheet. See how things start shaking out the closer I get to Vegas. When I, get to, when I start getting ready to go to Vegas, I'm going to start working specifically on sets that give me the numbers that I'm looking for. I'm going to want first best set, second best set, and possibly even the third best set. Every table is going to be different. They're not going to be the same as mine. Some are going to be close. Some are going to be a lot harder, as in they're going to have a more firm surface. Some are going to be bouncier. Well, I will do some practice on my bouncy end as well. But again, as promised, and I know it's taken a while, I wanted to give you guys another Bone Tracker video. I uh, hope you find it helpful. Be sure and ask questions. You can download this. You can download the basic set for free over at AxisPowerCraps.com. If you're a member of Heavy's forum, they've got this particular set that I'm using here. You have to join his forum. It's a, it's a grand total of $12, I believe, and they do that to keep the uh, robots and the spammers and flamers out because they don't want to pay. But you'll find that your membership there will probably be well worth it from trip reports, casino conditions, and general knowledge of the game. There's a tremendous amount of information in there, and I'm not trying to make a commercial for heavy sight. I really, he doesn't need it, but that's the, simple, that's the simple truth of it. So if you want this one that I'm using right here, where you've got more tabs uh, on your transpose, <clears throat> You'll have to get this version, and it's it's only available inside, and they've done that to kind of help protect it a little bit. It's still free. This this doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, the twelve bucks cost you to get into the forum, but you'll you'll soon be glad you paid that. The other thing I like looking at this is I've got several. Of course, all of these are in the same coaster column. All, number one, 7.07. .07. But parallel sixes gives me a lot of fours, more fours than I tossed. 
and four was one of my primary numbers. So if I'm stuck looking for a four, I may want to look at that parallel six just to see if I can snipe a four, especially on a come out row. Also can snipe a five with that. A lot of five and nines. And a seven and a seven and a half. Look, there's only seven more sevens tossed. There's 107 right here, and I threw 100. So, depending on how much you got on your all tall small and whether or not you need that number, you may be willing to risk. I know I probably would be seven more sevens out of 756, so one out of 10, right? To snipe a number. Again, valuable information. I need a two. Look at the twos. I only threw 21. No, I threw 30. So would I want to change? Don't know if I would want to change to the hard way set for three more, th you know, three more twos. But if I'm having trouble and I really need it and I can't get it with my current set, then I might throw a hard way set, 5-4, five, 5-4, four, five, four, see if I can get that two. If not, I'm probably going to get a five, which is okay as well. Hope you have found that helpful. Um, be sure and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit like. Appreciate it. But for those of you that are using Bone Tracker, if you have questions, let me know. And practice like you play. Play like you